Welcome to another spirit-filled message on Christocentric message. If you're new Offered to this already. channel, I would entreat you to hit now, the subscribe all button and then our like international this guests, as well, please I would stand. you to share this message across because we please believe stand. that all this our international is guests, let's celebrate them. Oh, graces are going to be imparted into you. And all of our international guests, guests, please stand. Watching, stand. Whether you are in this overflow, any of the overflows outside, please stand. You're about to receive something right now. Hallelujah. Now, we receive guests literally from across the globe every, every week. I have not seen a thing like this before. The sacrifices that these people make, many of them diplomats, captains of industry ministers in their own right and some of them travel from the farthest parts of the earth inconvenience themselves and just come week in week out hallelujah i know that we welcome them all the time but i once i, I was praying the lord put it in my spirit to speak and declare over these people one thing I can tell you for sure is that after this meeting tonight, you will know that the Lord brought you here. Yeah. Hallelujah. So whether you are in this, the main auditorium or any of the overflows, I want to speak over your life right now. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray for all our international guests people who have traveled from across the globe to be here i decree and declare by the power that raised christ from the dead everything that stands as a mountain between you and the next level the next season of your life i command that it clears away now i declare that it clears away now And I pray for you by the power of the Holy Spirit that you will encounter superior levels of the anointing from this meeting tonight. Those of you who are in ministry, go back as signs and wonders. In the name of Jesus Christ, supernatural manifestations of the Spirit. We declare that you are blessed. You remain ever blessed. In the name of Jesus. God bless you. Thank you so much. Please be seated. Hallelujah. Let me welcome everyone very quickly to our miracle service for the month of October. Give Jesus a big, big, big hand clap. Hallelujah. I want to celebrate everyone who has made the sacrifice to be here. Thank you so very much. My dear friend, Pastor Petrock is here with his lovely wife. Let's give them a big God bless you. Hallelujah. And one more time, let's appreciate Minister Dunsin. Hallelujah. Thank you so, so very much. Um, just, just a few important issues to discuss and then I'll begin to minister to people. This is a miracle service and let your heart be opened even as you receive in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Let your heart be opened in the name of Jesus. Two people will start laughing in the spirit. Please bring them out. This is by the Spirit. It's not, it's not two people by the Spirit. Laughter in the Spirit is not some Pentecostal charismatic thing. It, it is a mystery, a token that represents victory in the Spirit. The Bible says, the shouts of joy and victory shall not depart from the tents of the righteous. This is what God has revealed to me. Supernatural laughter just by the Spirit. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. So I want you to listen very carefully. Um, let me first start tonight by encouraging the body of Christ and our global family to connect indeed as you receive. My heart was touched, you know, when I released the email to be able to access me directly. I was broken and humbled afresh to see the burdens and the needs of people. It planted a renewed fire in my heart. I mean, within 24 hours, I think 
we had about maybe about at least six to seven thousand emails and over 95 percent of them was a desperate cry in, in a shocking way it was not even abused because the fear for my people and many people was that people will abuse it and i said well if people abuse it we close it down it's as simple as that but going through the you know most times we just put the prayer requests i don't have an opportunity to read them but just going through the things that people go through and to see the other hand of god's power at work in the lives of people it broke me it humbled me again and planted a renewed fire you know let me tell you sincerely as as much as we have several people on this ground we account for only about maybe without any sense of prejudice i'm not even sure up to 10 percent of the people who connect across the globe with hearts that are desperate and hungry so while you would think oh i have received last miracle service there are so many tens and hundreds of thousands others who are waiting for a chance like this like tonight for a change of story for them hallelujah so let me encourage everyone by the spirit what god is doing in this ministry can simply be said to be a sign and a wonder i have seen the manifold the hand of god in very very unusual dimensions and we can only say to him be the glory but it's important that you connect there are many people who have literally turned their homes and their offices even as i speak right now to sell centers across the globe where people just come and sit down and encounter the god of heaven this is the place of encounter this is the place of surrender this is the place where your life is changed there is no distance in the spirit it's important for you to know this that every time you connect i told you fans have no inheritance uh -uh. well wishers have no inheritance the people who really receive the anointing it takes more than being a fan it takes more than being a well-wisher you must connect genuinely in the spirit elijah had many sons of the prophet but only elisha received because he was a product of connection not proximity are we together now now I just want to address something very quickly especially for our international guests um, there are many people who are trying to get clarity over the official platforms to be able to reach the ministry and it's important and responsible for me to do this um, before we get into the ministration for tonight so our public relations department is officially the department mandated uh, with the responsibility of corresponding and interacting with all and sundry, especially our international community. And so you can have these details. All of you, please put it down. You want to reach contact Koinonia for anything, whether about the services, about the meetings, any inquiries at all. Info at koinoniaglobal.org. This is for media, media at koinoniaglobal.org. You can reach them for whatever inquiry but my concern is first um the pr leave leave the media let me just have the pr details because that's where a lot of people need clarity please get the number a public relations line and then um the email so that you can send and be sure you are sending to the right place in addition to the one you already have pr um what's that first one again pr um pr coin i think at gmail.org you can also use that one
together with this one. I thought you would compress them together so that the people can have it. But just to let you know that these are the official platforms. Please be careful so that you do not fall into the hands of scammers and so that people do not take advantage of your passion. Any and every inquiry at, about the ministry can come through these official platforms. And those who are on site, you can always go to our um, information desk just outside of this auditorium and the PR officials will be there to help you. Number two is an official platform for invitations and ministrations. Now, there are several people. It's very sad that I don't even respond to over 30% of the invites that come. One, because I'm limited, but number two, because there's only so much that we can do. But just to be able to guide us so that we understand, um, can you give me... Uh, the protocol, if you can get the protocol um, email and the official number for protocol also, if you have it, let's put it up, otherwise no problem, so that we can have these official platforms, koinoniaprotocol at gmail.com. You can use that, anything that has to do with invitations, you want to invite me, you don't have to go around making it look complicated as much as possible. We try to create all of this information so that it's accessible. The phone number, if you care to put it down before they project it, is plus 237, plus, two three, plus 234, 708, plus 234, 708, 7777, five sevens, six five. I'll take it again. Plus two three four seven zero eight seven 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 six five. So that's our official protocol line. Um, please make sure you use that so that it becomes very easy for you to access whatever it is that you need to access so that we end some of these unnecessary um, difficulties and confusion. Finally, I know that there are people who always want to meet with me personally. Let me confess to you respectfully and with all humility, it is very difficult, not just for me, but for anyone. There are levels you get to in life and in ministry where you don't have the luxury and the liberty, no matter how well-intentioned, no matter how sincere. Are we together? Most times I leave here not earlier than 12 midnight or sometimes it stretches to one because we still have to see people. So let me just guide you. The wisest and the easiest, most feasible way to be able to see me is to come for koinonia. Wanting a special dedicated meeting, it may not be easy and it may not even be wise. That is the truth. Hallelujah. Especially for when relationships are built, exemptions and positive compromises can be made. Are we together? Jesus taught us that when you come to a house, sit at the back. It's a principle. You cannot come and without any relationship and not knowing, you just make a demand and say, I exclusively want that time. Unfortunately, it may not work that way. Are we together? Yes. There are when, if and when positive compromises need to be made, with Jesus' joy, they are made. We're a house of honor. But generally, it is, it is best for you to know that... Um, the services are the most guaranteed platforms. And then any other platform that can allow me to meet with people, I use it whether it's the workers' meeting, whether it's the school of ministry. Unfortunately, we're done with school of ministry for this year. So make do with the platforms available, again, so that we minimize harassing some of our officials because there are some of us who have, you know, been very quite aggressive on them, all in a bid to say we want to see Apostle, it's not that there's anything special in us by our own ability and capacity. And then in truth, most of what you will want to see me about can be gotten through openness of heart in a service like this. It's just that in Africa, we don't believe scripture directly. No matter what happens, we just believe that until something happens personally, um, you know, it, it may not be necessary. Hallelujah. So please take note of some of these things. Um, it's important for us to know so that 
we so that we have guided knowledge and then of course we remain a very very responsible ministry in terms of the security and the welfare of our people i want to give you that guarantee under god god has given us the influence the credibility the resources and the intelligence to be able to put security at the highest level available for us to see that whilst god's people worship and do all that they do they can be guaranteed of their safety spiritually and then with all the intelligence that is available we need to say this um, because by the grace of god we are not only a spiritual people we're responsible people hallelujah praise the name of the lord are you ready for tonight we have after this miracle service we have just one more november there will not be a miracle service december by the way our final service for the year will be on the 18th 18th of december will be our final koinonia service for the year and then afterwards we'll take a little break again for our global family please take note but other ministry activities will still be on principally through um, the media but officially after 18th we'll have a little break so that we can rest pray retreat plan re-strategize for next year which is a most strategic year already by the revelations that have been coming um, from the Lord God has been very faithful to us you know I was meditating on the faithfulness of God while preparing for the meeting tonight and I had to study that word faithfulness that that was the foundation it was first in my own life and in this ministry I wish I had the liberty to expressly tell us some of the things that God has done and he's doing in this house I can simply tell you to God be the glory these are things that if you if you hear you will think they are exaggerations but it is it is the power and the grace of God in one word it is simply the faithfulness of God hallelujah very very powerful faithfulness comes from the Greek word pistos and it means fidelity it means dependability trust the ability to be truthful this is a very profound character of God in fact the Bible calls him I think it's in Revelation 22 the rider upon the white horse he said his name is faithful and true it is not just what he does it is who he is hallelujah that's revelations 19 11 i believe please give it to us i hope i'm right on that 19 11 faithful and true yes the rider on the white horse the bible says he that sat upon him was called faithful and true that means you can depend on him that means if god says i will lift you you can be rest assured that as far as his own part of the commitment is concerned there is no shadow of turning as far as he is concerned say amen, amen. psalm 119 psalm 119 please give it to us quickly psalm 119 from verse 90 the bible says every generation has the right to experience the faithfulness of god the faithfulness of God is unto all generations. That means there is no generation that is exempt from experiencing his faithfulness. Any generation that so desires can experience the faithfulness of God. Joshua chapter 21. My birthday three years ago, the Lord gave me this prophetic word. Joshua 21, 43 to 45. Joshua 21. And the Lord gave unto Israel all the land which he swore to give unto their fathers. And they possessed it and dwelt therein. Reading to 45. It says, And the Lord gave them rest round about, according to all that he swore unto their fathers. And there stood not a man of all their enemies before them. The Lord delivered all their enemies into their hands. I like verse 45. There failed not aught any good thing which the Lord had spoken to the house of Israel. Help me read the last sentence. All 
came to pass. How many? The word for your healing, the word for your lifting, the word for your restoration, it says all came to pass. Let me speak it as a prophetic word for someone. All must come to pass. I say it again, all must come to pass. All came to pass. That is the character of faithfulness. All came to pass. That means the quality of God's faithfulness insists that he keeps scanning your life to find out what has not yet come to pass that he said and to insist that means you can see a man increased in finances and yet God is still on his case and you say God but he's enjoying an area God says no my assignment by the spirit is to see that all someone prophesy all that's a prophetic word for you say all mm, all Lord, you said this year my family will rise. Thank you for my spiritual life, but all must come to pass. All came to pass. All came to pass. There was not one word. Hallelujah. In 1 Thessalonians 5.24, 1 Thessalonians 5.24, the Bible says, Faithful is he that calleth you. That means you need to know the credibility of the one who called you. When you send someone, listen, when you send someone on errand or when, when you are about to send someone and he does not know you, most times you want to vet the credibility of the person. You are sending me, Moses said, but who are you? You need to reveal yourself to me. I cannot stand before Pharaoh doubting who you are and doubting your power. He said faithful, not just powerful. There are men who are powerful, but they are not faithful. To be powerful means you have the ability, but the fidelity to remain is not there. Faithful is he that calleth you, who also will do it. Hallelujah. Knowing that God's faithfulness is without question, why then, listen carefully, why then do we have believers who do not seem to experience the fullness of the life, the power, the grace, the miracles of God over their lives? I want you to pay attention now. If it is true that God is faithful as we have seen from scripture, why then? Do we have situations that don't seem to change? Why then do we have conditions? Maybe health, your home, your children, your life. What then is the problem? Psalm 74 from verse 9. I found a very powerful scripture. Please pay attention. God is speaking to us now. He said, we see not our signs. There is no more any prophet. Neither is there among us that knoweth how long. How long this situation? How long will I continue in this situation of misery and poverty and attacks and pain? We do not see the signs that tell us the end has come. Next verse. Oh God, how long shall the adversary reproach? Shall the enemy blaspheme your name forever? Uh-huh. Why withdrawest thou thy hand, even thy right hand? He said, pluck it out of your bosom. Verse 12. Let's hurry up. For God is my king of old, walking salvation in the midst of the earth. It means I know that you can do this. It is within your power to change my story, turn my life around, give my family a miracle. Your salvation and your works is not something I'm in doubt of. Next verse. Thou didst divide the sea by thy strength. Thou breakest the heads of the dragon in the waters. Reading to 2014. Thou breakest the head of Leviathan in pieces and gave him to be meat to the people inhabiting the wilderness. Thou didst cleave the mountain and the flood. You did dry up mighty rivers. The day is your own. Even the night is also your own. And thou prepares the light and the sun. Look at this, 17. Thou hast set all the borders of the earth. 
thou has made summer and winter that means you are the one in control of seasons that means lord i there is no reason why my life should be like this as far as your faithfulness and power is concerned the word of god already says you are ever ready what then is the reason why i do not see my signs 18. remember this that the enemy has reproached oh lord and that the foolish people have blasphemed your name. 19. O oh, deliver not the soul of thy turtle dove unto the multitude of the wicked. Forget not the congregation of thy poor forever. The last verse. It says, have respect. Palash kanima lakusia. Have respect unto the covenant. That means... I don't know what is stopping you from stretching your hands. I don't have a right to question you, but I know how you operate. Have respect unto the covenant for the dark places of the earth are the habitation of cruelty. You know what was happening to the psalmist? He was looking for all the ways he can get God to arise on his throne and move. He said, Lord, I do not see these signs. I don't know why I can belong to such a powerful God, such a mighty God, one who gives children yet I'm barren, one who can open doors yet I'm stagnated. He said, I do not see my signs, but Lord, I do not forget. You parted the Red Sea. You are still a great God. I do not doubt your ability. What can I do that will get you up from your throne to arise and visit me? I am the creation. I am I'm a creature, not the creator. I can't command you, but there is something I can tell you. Have respect. Mageta Bosch Kaliga Parosia. Have respect unto the covenant. The only thing I can invoke that can make you arise is your faithfulness. Remember, you do not change. Remember, you are not a man. People can jump from one political party to the other, depending on the situation. People can jump from one region to the other, depending on the convenience. People can change, but I know that you have fidelity. Have respect. I should not be in this situation. If it is true that you are my God, if it is true that you are the lifter of men, if it is true that you are the door yourself, have respect. There needs to be something that gets you from your throne to arise in your power and your majesty and to visit me. He said, we see not our signs. Please pay attention. Lend me the next five, ten minutes and let me establish something very powerful. Psalms 11 and verse 3. There is one spiritual mystery that except engage with understanding is responsible for the supposed laxity as far as the manifestation of the hand of God is concerned over the lives of God's people. I just want to open your eyes to see it very quickly and then we'll pray because this night in the name of Jesus for someone it is your night of liberty it is your night of release by the power that raised Christ from the dead 11 and verse 3 Psalms please give it to us the Bible says if the foundations be destroyed what can the it didn't say what can the people do the righteous even though they are the righteous by the time the foundation is destroyed the Bible says there is serious problem the word foundation is a very important word I wish I had the time to teach but this is a miracle service tonight foundation simply means the point of origin foundation means the starting point architecturally foundation means the load-bearing part of a building usually invisible so when the Bible talks about foundations he means the starting point that there is something about the starting point of a man and that if it is faulty there has to be a rule of engagement to correct it in other words to see the mighty and outstretched arm of God 
Alleluia. In Matthew chapter 7 from verse 24, Jesus himself was teaching and he said it does not matter the dexterity of your architecture, no matter how true, how powerful what you build is, if it is built on a faulty foundation, he gives you a guarantee that something will go wrong. I will liken him, he says, to a wise man which built his house on a rock. To 27, next verse. The Bible says the rain descended, the floods came, and the wind blew and beat upon that house. And it fell not, not because of the paint, not because of the strength of the materials that were used, simply because it was on a very solid foundation. Next verse, 26. It says, so also there is someone who built his house. What was common with both of them is that they built and they built well. There was no problem with the building. Maximum architecture was employed in the building, but the problem was the foundation. Listen very carefully. The same thing that happened to the one who had a house on the rock happened to the one who had a house on sand. And the Bible says, the last verse 27, that the same rain, the same winds, the same floods came. And the Bible says, it fell. And so great was the fall of it. Can I tell you the truth? Faulty spiritual foundations have prophetic spiritual implications to the point that it can seem to cripple the hand of God over the life of a man. Most believers do not understand that the realm of the spirit has a predefined modus operandi. And if you do not know how the realm of the spirit operates, you can keep wishing for things to happen and keep being embarrassed forever. The psalmist said, listen, if I keep using emotions and I keep complaining and I keep grumbling, I may not receive any results, but I need to drop all this aside and say, have respect for the covenant. Not just my tears, not just what I feel, not just my prayer request. Are we together? When Hezekiah in chapter 38 of Isaiah when Isaiah came and prophesied to him and said, put your house in order, you will not recover. The Bible says he turned his face to the wall and said, remember how I have walked diligently before you in truth and with a perfect heart. And I have done that which is good in your sight. He didn't say, remember, I am a king. He needed to use a basis to say, I can't die, not based on this. There are rules of engagement in this kingdom. Now, let me tell you the truth. As powerful as God is, as powerful and mighty as God is, he didn't cast sin out of man. Why will God seem to be so helpless when he was the one who created man? He was the one who created the devil that caused man to fall. If God wiped the whole, the whole earth and heaven, why did he not just wipe Satan away and start afresh? If I were God, why would I go through the labor of coming to die as creator? He was not co-creator. He was creator and is creator. You thought he would just say, sin, get out of man. Satan, vanish. Dematerialize and go away. I am God. He's still within his power. Is there anything too hard? But even God had to submit to the modus operandi of the spirit. Are we together now negotiated and sent Jesus Jesus came through the womb of a virgin walked 30 years died was buried went to the grave all to save man's sin was it that hard for God when you understand that you will stop the realm of wishing and hoping that things will change God, you are mighty. It does not take you anything to lift me. You are right, but you will still remain in that situation because that is not what compels the mighty hand of God. Let me tell you the truth. God is touched by his love, but he arises based on his honor to the modus operandi of the realm of the spirit. Have respect unto the covenant. 
for the dark places of the earth are a habitation of cruelty many of us come from families that have fraternized with darkness foundationally many of us right now are sitting on all kinds of demonic things that we have not engaged the word of god and spiritual understanding to bring liberty practically and yet we keep saying it does not matter and our lives keep showing that there is a legitimate ground for the continuity of certain things please listen carefully i when it has to do with oppression and the rules of the spirit it does not care whether you are a preacher it does not care whether you are sincere the bible says the ones who will be asking questions are even the righteous that if the foundation be destroyed it is the righteous who will even be complaining hallelujah for instance in joshua chapter 6 from verse 26 when joshua destroyed jericho he made a pronouncement by the spirit listen carefully joshua adjured them at that time saying cause be the man before the lord that rises up and builded this city jericho he said he shall lay the foundation in his firstborn and in his youngest son shall he set up the gates of it joshua made a pronouncement that anybody that rises to rebuild jericho again as that person lays the foundation he will lay it on the life of his firstborn and as he completes it he will complete it on the life of his lastborn first kings chapter 16 let me show you something i have verse 33 now the man called Ahab, the Bible says he made a grove and Ahab did more to provoke the Lord God of Israel to anger than all the kings of Israel that were before him. Read verse 34, please. Or let me just read it and you listen. He said, in his days did Hiel, the Bethelite, build Jericho. Is that in your Bible? The Bible says he laid the foundation in Abiram his firstborn if you were the firstborn of that man it was not your fault to be the firstborn you just know that as soon as they started that project a mysterious disease will come upon you and you'll be wondering what did I do wrong not knowing that a speaking is looking for you and you may go and say but medical doctors will check you what is wrong with the machine cannot diagnose what is wrong not knowing that the person who spoke has died yet the prophetic word is still in force abiram started getting mysteriously sick until he died the firstborn and the man still refused in defiance he set up the gates thereof now the bible does not tell us whether the man was aware of the prophecy or not whether he was aware or he was not aware as far as the prophecy was concerned whoever triggers it let it work ah. please listen please listen please listen please listen because this is not about being sincere and insincere what did abiram do to die please talk to me did he kill anybody did he look for anybody's trouble his only offense was he was born from a family that decided to fight the prophetic word the bible says when he set up the gate his younger son exactly what happened to the elder brother now started happening to the younger brother what is wrong with you again i'm sure the mother will say let's rush to the hospital now according to the word of the lord which he spake by joshua the son of Nun. hallelujah don't you dare think it does not matter that our forefathers buried people alive and while those people were being buried they said we we, we are dying but the ones who will be alive will be worse than death and they said we don't care when they were shouting at jesus crucify him they didn't know what they were saying and for many people we say it does not matter if the foundations be destroyed what can the righteous do 
Deuteronomy chapter 18 from verse 9. There are many people who have subjected themselves in ignorance or by reason of the things that happened in time past. It says, when thou art come to the land which the Lord giveth thee, thou shalt not learn to do after the abomination of those nations. Uh -huh. Next verse. It says, there shall not be found among you anyone that maketh his son or his daughter to pass through fire or that useth divination or an observer of times an enchanter a witch to 12 11 please or a charmer a consultant with familiar spirit or a wizard a necromancer verse 12 for all that do these things are an abomination unto the lord and because of these abominations the lord thy god will drive them out from before thee hallelujah I think I shared a story here in Koinonia and let me say it quickly before we begin to pray about someone who a young lady a, a young woman who wanted a child desperately and she went to somebody and the person said well I know what to do and you will have a child but that when this child is 20 20 on the dot make sure you return this child back for some kind of sacrifice that will be done and the woman looked at the old man and said, 20 years from now, you probably will be dead. She pointed at a tiny boy who was playing there and said, this boy will be alive. He's the one who will be here. This is a case that I handled. It's not a story they told me. When this lady was 20 on the dot, may God help you to come and stand near her and say you like her. You see what will happen to you. You came innocently. It's not like any, you are bad, you are not bad. Church born again person just came and things started going haywire and then people started advising the mother say quietly go to that man and resolve whatever it is or his son so someone recommended her that she would come to me when she came and i looked at a lady wonderful lady wonderful woman the realm of the spirit doesn't care did you hear what i said wonderful lady wonderful man the realm of the spirit does not care foundations are powerful foundations are powerful regions have foundational problems you know the power of foundations by the patterns that follow the patterns as it happened to son it happened to father it happened to elder brother families where women feed the men no matter how hard working the men are something must happen hallelujah but this is why God has ordained a meeting like this because in the name of Jesus who is the son of the living God everything that needs to be corrected for your glory to rise everything that needs to be put in place this night in the presence of the angels and the presence of the mighty one who is the king of glory it must be corrected this night hallelujah I came from a background and a family and a region where I didn't see some things happen to people I had to sit down and study it sincerely and and to be honest myself that if I have to rise to a position where I'll be able to serve and honor the name of the Lord at a global scale there are things that need to be corrected and done I've told you my story as a man of God demons used to oppress me most people will not tell you the truth they didn't care that i was anointed it didn't stop the sick from being healed though yet i will go to bed and here comes this wicked spirit and because of the prophetic inclination i would see them i thought it was so with everyone how can i go and preach and a spirit is running out in a meeting and yet coming to me in a room and i'm driving it and it's not going have respect for the covenant I know one, a very proud gentleman years ago, he walked into my room, I used to counsel in a small room that time, and he walked to me and I saw a spirit standing behind him. And he was sharing with me some of his challenges. And I said, can I pray for you? It looks like there's something. He said, no, 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 I don't believe that. I said, okay, no problem, I'm sorry. Let me just pray. As I said in Jesus' name, the last thing that gentleman will remember was maybe like 30 or so minutes later on, when he even recovered 
for the next three days he kept texting me what happened he said this is everything i believe i don't know where to start from let me tell you the truth foundations are real foundations are very very real hallelujah foundations are real you find patterns you find all kinds of demonic things that seem to veto the efforts of men regardless what they do there are sincere men of god who have graces that should be speaking across the globes but these foundations because of an incorrect foundation that has not been dealt with with understanding the devil does not need to cause medical problem a problem of delays and pain and all of that he doesn't need to do that all he needs to do is to ensure that that faulty foundation remains the the faulty foundation will manufacture itself many kinds of wrong problems do you cut a tree by removing the leaves one by one think how burdensome that labor is foundation by the time you uproot it even if the leaves are still green just leave them is a matter of time they will dry up because it has lost contact the same way that tree fell this is how i declare over someone whatever has connected you in the name of jesus it gives way this night listen carefully this is someone's deliverance already i've shared with you you see by reason of of the prophetic i have i have encountered many spirits i don't share all these testimonies because i want people people's faith to be grounded on scripture not just on prophetic experiences are we together yes but i i, I usually repeat the ones i've shared for emphasis that i was praying one night and all of a sudden my ceiling just disappears and i see this strange creature having an eye as big as a human head two eyes fierce anger help them please with the tail that looks like a dinosaur the tail had its own life separate from the creature and it was looking at me like i'm looking at you fuming and he says so you think you can bring god's people into abundance that is a spirit that controls poverty across territories let me speak to someone whatever has kept your family down honestly in the name of jesus christ the one who is the lifter of men i decree and declare every spirit lets you go now lets you go now it must let you go now hallelujah sit down please many years ago I came into this city and usually when I come when I'm traveling I would just take a cab moving across the city I'll take a cab and I remember one of the drivers that you know I took the cab he was talking to me and he said I listened to him he was speaking in broken English and he said there is a spirit in this city that never allows money to stay in the hands of people this was a driver speaking and he said he would get money and yet not be able to do anything so i think maybe they consulted you know all these people they believe in everything so they consulted a medium or some kind of thing that now told him that the moment he has money he should run out of the city and go and start something and he said he was almost completing his house now you don't have to be under that kind of threat there's authority in christ but it comes through light it does not come through desire the challenge with believers is that we make bold claims of the manifestation of the promises without the requisite level of light and illumination. God forbid, I can't be in this situation. What is the light that supports that statement? Otherwise, you will be wasting your time. Are we together? John 1, 5, and the light shineth in darkness, and the darkness comprehended it not. There are families that it is not sickness that plagues them, but this spirit of poverty. Even if you make so, that someone in that family a director in NMPC, they will still be poor. Are we together? There are many people who will bring certificates for you. Three doctors, PhD in a family, 
and none of them has a good job what kind of thing is that there are people who have been in this city the land itself has rejected them everything fights you everything fights you is someone learning maybe there's someone watching there's someone following and you're saying apostle you are just describing my situation as a family we we don't know what the problem is don't know what the problem is you take in and after two three months here comes this strange and wicked spirit and somebody comes to molest you and by the next day or a few days after you lose the pregnancy that one will need more than medical attention. That one will need a miracle service like this. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. I know someone who vowed to help a man. And I'm telling you, I, I kid you not. By the next day, the person went to the office and the person said, I cannot remember seeing you. Abba! You can't remember seeing me? When you said I should come with my CV tomorrow, for instance, and give me a job, what happened? Mm. Hallelujah. What of people who actually get things, but they don't have longevity in their life? I don't mean physical longevity. Nothing stays long. The moment they have money, just start praying for them. Because it's a matter, in one month it goes down. Once you give them a position, just know that in in two or three weeks in that office something must happen then they must lose it it's like if you don't lose good things the realm of the spirit is at a, a state of unrest if there is anything that is on anybody's head here that followed you for this meeting i decree and declare by the power of the holy spirit i lift it up from you now i lift it up from you now I lift it up from you now. Hallelujah. I know someone who traveled abroad responsibly. Just when they were checking people at the immigration, I think I've shared the story. They were looking for somebody who was a thief. And they saw him and I think there was a up to 50% resemblance with the thief and they moved him to one room just like that I don't look like a rich man I don't look like somebody who is impacting the world my face now looks like a thief I ah, know every wrong every fail in the name of Jesus that is programming evil over you that makes evil to look like good and good to look like evil I declare that veil is torn from your face. Torn from your face. Torn from your face. Torn from your face. Hallelujah. Please hear me. True story. Someone was begging for money from somebody to take care of an emergency in the hospital. This is a true story. And when the person was doing the transfer, something came on the person and he missed the account by one digit and he sent the money to someone else. This is a true story. See, the, thing I've, the things I've seen in this life bar by reason of ministry. How do you plan to bless someone? Then it's when it's now your turn, they miss it by a digit. What was that other person praying that his own account was the one that came? Listen, do you know that God is called, you read your Bible, the sons of Jacob. I hope you know, Jacob had 12 sons. Is that true? The first of them was Reuben. Read your Bible, you are Bible students. Jesus is never called the lion of the tribe of Reuben. What happened to the firstborn? Not even Simeon. How did Judah come out to become the lion of the tribe of Judah? When Jacob was blessing his sons, you read your Bible now. He looked at Reuben and he said, you are my strength. You are the, the excellency of my strength. But you are as unstable as the wind. He said, thou shalt not excel. And even Jesus, when he came, he refused to identify with that man. 
it would have polluted his own ministry. Not lion of the tribe of Reuben, not lion of the tribe of Simeon, lion of the tribe of Judah. So don't say we are the most enlightened family in our area. The realm of the spirit rearranges based on the covenants you are standing on. Did you hear what I said? It is, you can claim whatever you want to claim. The realm of the spirit with digital precision will rearrange everything based on the, the code that it was programmed with. That means it is possible to be a man physically but the realm of the spirit brings you to a position of a woman and you will find out that you cannot feed your wife because the realm of the spirit does not yet authorize and recognize you as the Abba, the bread provider. You can be a graduate in a family and the one who takes care of them is the one that did not even go to primary school because in the realm of the spirit, that person is standing on a covenant that the realm of the spirit recognizes that one as a breadwinner. I'm saying that because we're about to pray. This miracle service, don't worry, we'll finish on time. Don't say I'm still teaching. This is the deliverance you are receiving. No, tonight you have to be angry. Enough is enough. Enough is enough. In the name of Jesus. Enough is enough. Hallelujah. Can I tell you? Do you know how many gifted people are in this nation and in Africa world ministers music ministers these are people that are supposed to be at a global level but this foundation has kept them you talk with them you are like what are you still doing here there are people who will listen to you and say you are the exact person our company is looking for and after three years they will pass you every day and never call you for a job they would bring an ignorant person and train the person, send the person to France, return the person back and give the person a job. Whereas you already have the qualification. How about ministers of the gospel? Just because you are sincere, let me tell you the truth. Liking you is a grace. Make no mistakes about that. Do you, liking you and receiving of your ministry generationally speaking is a grace you can be sincere and do all you want to do it will still not work is someone learning now wicked spirits programmed in foundations it's like they tie you with a rope just when you are moving you are about to obtain this the way it pull your father it pulls you back you are on your way going whether you are a preacher it pulls you back just when you are reaching your destiny helper it pulls you back in the name of Jesus whatever has tied you I cut it away from you right now I cut it away from you right now I'm saying it again I cut it away from you listen can I tell you believe me when I tell you you can know that you have had victory over your foundation the result will speak instantly a job that was difficult suddenly comes listen job chapter 42 give us verse 10 and 11 let me show you something you can know when a demonic resistance holding you has left the realm of the spirit and the physical realm will bear witness because the earth, listen to me, the earth, even water, is a witness. And the Lord turned the captivity of Job when he prayed for his friends. So the Lord gave Job twice as much as he had. But 11 is where I'm really going to. What suddenly happened to him? You can know captivity has turned around. Watch this. Then there came unto him all his brethren and all his sisters and all they that had been of his acquaintance before. Question, what drove them? You think they just left? You think they did? 
every one of them started feeling like kite. What is, why is Job's issue coming to my heart? That's because something was corrected in the realm of the spirit. Watch this. The Bible says they did eat bread with him in his house. They bemoaned him and comforted him over the evil that the Lord had brought unto him. And then, this is how God restored him. Every man also gave him a piece of money. So they had it before while he was suffering. The same way your uncle has it and is aware that you are in this city. You have sent a text, sent a text. Stop sending a text. Come for miracle service. Carry an anointing upon your head. I hope you believe what I'm teaching you. Everyone gave him a piece of money. What kind of business was he going to start in that state of pain? How long would it take him? So the Lord restored in the realm of the spirit, but physically things started happening. Can I tell you the truth? You can know, doctors, when a patient has malaria, how do you know the patient has malaria or typhoid? There are signs. Is that true? He goes to the hospital and there's what they call vital signs. Am I right, medical people? You now begin to check. Uh -uh. Temperature is running. The person is um, maybe vomiting, stooling, or doing whatever. How do you know the patient is recovering? You know the patient is recovering because things begin to change. Are there times when you take drugs and find out that the drug did not affect the intended change? You still go back to the doctor and say, this drug did not work. They will now do a further test and say, ah, we thought it was this. So just because it was a drug did not mean it solved every problem. As far as your body is concerned, you didn't take a drug. Even though you were on one week medication, your body did not recognize it because it was not the solution. Don't say I have been praying. Don't say they prayed for me. When you take malaria drug for, for what now? Typhoid, it may not work, but it is still drug. Tonight, the right drug is coming on your head. Yes, In the name of Jesus Christ. As I'm declaring over you, you may not know what is changing. For some of you, as I'm declaring, it's not only your health. By tomorrow, if phone calls, you will wake up with phone calls and say, what is happening to me? What is changing in my life? Listen, please hear me believers, let me tell you the truth. By the power of the Holy Spirit, I've been mandated to insist that your life produces results. Yeah. Hallelujah. Undeniable, unquestionable results. Some of you, by reason of what is on your life, you are supposed to be building houses for people, not even looking for rent. Honestly, because in terms of value, you have worked on yourself. Let me pray for someone again. What is sitting on your destiny that will not let you and your family rise by the power that is in the name of Jesus. Here at Koinonia, all oh, be lifted from your life. Be lifted from your life. Be lifted from your life. That demonic embargo. The cause of the firstborn. The cause of the lastborn. The cause of siblings. The cause of idolatry. The cause of necromancy. The cause of fathers sacrificing children to be able to get money. It may not be my fault, but the Bible tells me I have an advocate with the Father. Even Jesus the righteous, I decree and declare already for someone that embargo on your life, that programming, it must give way this night. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. 
You believe in what I'm telling you? Papa, what is there about the mighty hand of God that you cannot see? But let me tell you, if the foundations be destroyed, when the foundation is destroyed, God wants to step in, but there is a limitation because the covenant does not allow him to operate based on that. What the Holy Spirit can do is to grant you access to light, to know what you need to do that takes away the barrier. Are we together now? Yes. Between you and God and your breakthrough and testimony, there are barriers, principally foundations. There are foundations that keep speaking woes of ill health. There are foundations that speak woes of failure. The only way you eat is by being a servant. You never can rise to a position of influence. Whether as a man of God, as a businessman, it does not care whether you are in America, whether you are wherever, it does not matter. Do you know Nathaniel said about Jesus, can anything good come out of Nazareth? Didn't you see what happened to Samson? Was Samson not a Nazarene? You think Samson just lay down and told a lady to cut his hair? You think he was that stupid? When you have that kind of power, will you be that foolish? Don't downplay the power of foundations. It can keep quiet for 10 years. You will think you are fine. But by the 11th year, it will come and pull you down and cancel everything. The house that fell, that was built on sand, it didn't fall from day one. There was a time that both houses were nice. If they even told you to pay for the house, you may prefer the house on sand to the house on the rock. Wait until the storms come. Wait until the wind blows. That's why you can see someone who is a billionaire for 25 years. Then by the 26th year, the foundation says I've been quiet. And in one year, everything goes down one year shame comes a ministry can blow some for many years and then it's like an ignition from the realm of the spirit and boom, just like balloon everything goes down but i know whom i believe and i'm persuaded that he's able to keep that which is committed unto him against that day against that day against that day now there are some of you you may not be poor. Listen, we're about to pray. You may not be poor, but you never have helpers in your life. Everything you get comes directly from you. That's a terrible way to live. Everything. If a door must open, you are the one who must open it. If you must eat, it must come from your hand. You do not know the help of God. Hallelujah. A man of God, you are a ministry. You pay all the bills by yourself. You pay, nobody sees you and say, no, I believe in what you are doing. I'm standing with you. It's a spirit. It's a spirit. It's a spirit. I know someone who was walking and what he uses for his transport from where he was staying. Sincerely speaking, at the end of it, when we calculated it, it was not more than 10,000 that was left. That means you are working on, but what you are earning, subtract transportation and the rest. And at the end of it, what you are really earning is 10,000. There are spirits that fight and destroy breadwinners of families. The moment it identifies that you are the one God is using to bless a family, here comes that thing. It will pull you down. So you go to a region and only find old people. Where are the young people? The spirits know that the, he will take care of Baba and Mama and it will fight you. You can see a young person sitting down and there is absolutely nothing working in his life. Two prayer points and I'll begin to minister within the time I have left. Tonight God wants to shake away this thing. <laughs> Hallelujah. I was told a story of, I think it was the Billy Graham Institute, that because they wanted to preserve, they wanted to preserve the institute 
and some of the monuments, you know, just like Baba, Baba Deboye's, you know, former house and all of that, and that they had to bring engineers. They dug through the ground and they carried the building out from the foundation and relocated it to a, a, another region and put it down there. That's right. That's what is happening to somebody this night. Yeah. Hear me? You don't renovate foundations. Uh -uh. If it is not working, there is that spiritual bulldozer that can dig to the ground and carry you. Is it not in your Bible that God can pick a man from a dunghill? It's a location and place him somewhere else. So what if I came from my region? Must I carry the cost that comes with that region? So what if my forefathers served idols? Did the realm of the spirit not hear when I made my declarations of faith? Lift up your heads, O ye gates. Be ye lifted, ancient doors. Listen. I prayed this for myself. I prayed this for this ministry. And I said in my lifetime, I will see the glory of the Lord. And no power of darkness is going to cut short the manifestation of that glory. It does not matter what the devil wants. Listen, victory can be seen. You can know that the hand of God is upon your life. Hallelujah. Two prayer points. And when it's time to pray, please let me plead with you in Jesus' name. If you can, for the sake of this prayer, pair yourselves into three, like we did the last time. Just these three prayer points and fire will fall in. Find anybody. If you don't have a partner, that's all right. But we are going to pray. If your neighbor is not serious, please leave him alone. We are serious. This, this, is, this is a destiny altering moment. Shani kaparakatosiata. Embrakate katosiata. Say after me in the name of Jesus. I decree and declare. By the blood. Of the eternal covenant. Right now. I declare. Every negative foundation. Every altar speaking against me by the blood of Jesus be destroyed now. Go ahead and pray. 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 Influence be destroyed, fighting access be destroyed, fighting advancement be destroyed. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, help those under the anointing. Jeremiah chapter 1 from verse 9. My God, fire is burning in this place. Then the Lord put forth his hand and touched my mouth. And he said unto me, Behold, I have put my words in your mouth. Read verse 10. And I give unto you an anointing that will set you this day over nations and over kingdoms to root out, to pull down, to destroy, to throw down, to build, and to plant. Say, Father, in the name of Jesus, the anointing for this dimension of exploits, I receive it now. Go ahead and pray. 
the grace dominion over kingdoms over nations to pull down to destroy Pray. Sapparacatabarandabagaratos Soproscoti Balatus Savres in Ebecates In the name of Jesus In the name of Jesus In the name of Jesus In and just help those under the anointing I'm about to minister deliverance now in the name of Jesus Can I add one more prayer for you? Please don't be tired though. God is doing something in your life here. Say in the name of Jesus. The spirits of inheritance. The spirits of ancestry. By the blood of Jesus. Every legal access. You have. Over my life. My family. I declare. By the blood. Let it be broken now. Go ahead and pray. Broken now. Broken now. Broken now. Broken now. By the power of the Holy Ghost. Broken now. Broken now. Let it be broken. Let it be broken. Let it be broken. Sapra kata pekata pekatos koto pas. Ekra tekata perekatos koto pros. Soto pos koto pelekatos. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Do you know what I'm seeing? The Lord is showing me a vision. And this is like the vision of a bride. You know how you say you may now, that thing you, you may now lose, uh, unveil the bride. That's what I'm seeing. That is a grace for visibility. We are going to pray. Are we together now? You know, when you watch a wedding ceremony, you now say you may now unveil the bride. That means it's time for manifestation. God is speaking to someone. Say in the name of Jesus. I declare my head, my hands, my destiny be lifted up. Find visibility. Go ahead and begin to pray. Be lifted up. Be lifted up. My head. No more downcast. Be lifted up. My influence. Find visibility. Man of God, pray. Pray. 
businessman pray my head a symbol of my glory my hands a symbol of my productivity my destiny be lifted up Hello, beloved in Christ. We hope this message was a blessing to you. I would want you to do something for us. If you are new here, kindly hit on that subscribe button for us. And then like this video as well. Share to your family and friends to bless them because we know that this message will be a blessing to their body, to their soul, and to their spirit. We would need you to do one thing for us too. Tell us in the comment section where you were watching us from. And if you've got any testimony for us, kindly share with us. Thank you for watching.